For the train for Santa Monica, take the Expo Line from $1.75 from downtown LA to Santa Monica. Hello folks, I'm Daniel Nobre. For this adventure, we heading to the Santa Monica Pier, the historical Santa Monica Pier, I'm waiting here for the train, and we're gonna take a look in this beautiful day, what is this historic Santa Monica Pier, the end of the Route 66. So please stay with me. I think we're gonna have some fun in Santa Monica this time. Let's go. The Santa Monica Pier is a large double jointed pier at the foot of Colorado Avenue in Santa Monica. It contains a small amusement park, concession stands, and areas for views and fishing. On September 9, 1909, after 16 months of construction, the Santa Monica Municipal Pier opened to the public. And it was when the original Santa Monica Pier opened that thousands of people swarmed onto the 1,600-foot-long concrete pier to enjoy a festive day of band concerts, swimming races, and the novelty of walking above the waters of the Pacific Ocean. While originally built to satisfy the city's sanitation needs, the pier quickly became a magnet for a fishing community and fueled the imagination of many local entrepreneurs. With just a few years, Plans were put forth to build an amusement pier adjacent to the municipal pier. In 1916 came the famous carousel manufacturer Charles I. D. Luth, and he purchased the land immediately south of the municipal pier for development. Luth provided Santa Monica's North Beach with its first national amusements including the Blue Strake Racer roller coaster. The Hippodrome housed the Pierce Carousel, and the building still stands today with the distinction of being Santa Monica's first national historic landmark. In 1918, Luth passed away, and his family continued to run the pier until 1923, when they sold it to the Santa Monica Amusement Company. Their plans included expanding the pier's trail rides, beginning with the removal and replacement of the Blue Strake Racer. And they put it in 1924, the Wheelwind Diaper. They also added one of the richest chapters in the pier's history, the La Monica Ballroom. Vast and ornate, the ballroom consumed so much of the pier that when viewed from the beach, it appeared as monumental building floating magically above the sea. In 1948, famed country swing music star Spade Cooley televised his weekly TV program from this ballroom. It was the first time that a music TV show was ever televised live. In 1933, the Santa Monica Yacht Harbor was born. The harbor was home to a collection of yachts, fishing boats, and a cruise liner to Catalina. It was also the home base for the shuttle service to offshore gambling operations run by mobster Tony Cornero until 1939 when then Attorney General Earl Warren led a legal crusade to shut them down. The last to go was Cornero's flagship, the Rex which it was raided in 1939 during what came to be known as the Battle of Santa Monica Bay. After a three-day standoff, Cornero surrendered because he needed a haircut. Government agents boarded the racks and threw all the gambling machines and tables overboard. Earl Warren subsequently went on to become the governor of California and ultimately Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. 
In 1940, the famous neon sign at the top of the pier ramp was installed by the Santa Monica Pier Businessmen's Association to celebrate the opening of the newly built ramp. It is an internationally recognized tourist destination and a symbol of the Southern California lifestyle. In 1943, Walter Newcomb purchased the Luff Amusement Pier. Newcomb had been managing the pier's operations at the time and also owned the arcade and gift shop. No long thereafter, his name had become so associated with the Southern Hall of the Pier that he became known as the Newcomb Pier. And here is the moment that I take this selfie because now I am returning to the pier around 7 p.m. at night. So I entered the boardwalk from the beach from Pico Boulevard and head north walking to the pier again to see the action at night. It has been a nice temperature around 70 is the day that I was walking on this Sunday afternoon evening. Very nice and pleasant here in Santa Monica for this filming. The pier managed to carry on through the 50s and the 60s, satisfying fishermen, tourists and locals alike. The other famous piers along the Gold Coast, however, disappeared one by one. The glamour of the amusement piers had given away to the inland theme parks such as Disneyland. In 1973, the fate of the Santa Monica Pier seemed to be the same as that of its neighbors. The city council had slated the pier for destruction in favor of a man-made island which we will host a resort hotel. Santa Monica, often referring to itself as a sleepy little beach town, woke up. Its citizens, in a rage over the thaw, of losing the last of its famous landmarks. After much publicity and the deliverance of a petition to that attention, the council rescinded their plans to build the island. Three of the councilmen who have voted to destroy the piers were overwhelmingly defeated in their run for re-election, and their replacement saw to it that the pier will never be destroyed. But it was in 1983 that Mother Nature was determined to accomplish what the former city council could not. A pair of violent winter storms destroyed over one-third of the pier's length. Gone were the cafes, the bait shop, the rock shop and the harbor patrol station. The pier in its entirety seemed too badly beaten to survive. But the people, true to their mission in 1973, put forth the effort to save the pier again. The city formed the Pier Restoration and Development Task Force, which later became the PRC, to oversee a reconstruction and day-to-day -day operations of the pier. By April 1990, the entire western structure had been rebuilt. And a curious fact is this store at the end of the Santa Monica Pier is the last gift shop of Route 66 because the pier is the end of Route 66. From Chicago to Santa Monica, the first, the mother highway ends right here. To bring attention to the pier during its reconstruction, Save the Pier Week was held in 1983, sparking a series of annual concerts known as the Twilight Dance Series. Today, the concerts are as regular as part of the Southern California summer as Sunshine, the Sea and the Sand. And in 1996, the Pacific Park opened, bringing back the first full-scale amusement park on the pier since the 1930s. And in this new millennium, our pier continues to be relevant and important not only for the city, but for the people of Santa Monica. Today's pier atmosphere is decorated with a variety of street performers and artists who put their talents on display for crowds of admirers every day. And at the end of this presentation, I must thank you all for watching. 
and invite you, if you are not a subscriber, to become a subscriber of the channel and please recommend the channel to a friend. And of course, a special thank you for all my loyal subscribers. You guys rock my world, for sure. And of course, for more history of Santa Monica, please visit the website above. And don't forget, I'll be back with new adventures. My name is Daniel Nobri, and I see you on our next trip. Goodbye.